Welcome to the Big Biz Show, featuring insight, analysis, and a lot of stuff that's none of your business. Uh, hold on. This is the Big Biz Show. I think it is their business. Making the markets work for you. Here's the man with the plan, Sully. Hey there, live from the Loft 100 Studios in sunny San Diego, California. Big Biz Show is on there. Great to have you along. 110 million TV homes every weeknight. 150 radio stations. That's right, we are TV and radio. Let's not forget Armed Forces Radio Network in 175 countries and all the ships at sea. Love our troops. Formerly called AFARTS. Yes. American Forces Radio Television Service. It's now called AFN. And we just got a new contract for them. Uh, awesome. Actually, actually, I did. So, sorry, Mike. In other words, you didn't help out. Again. I tried. <laughs> yeah, I tried. Hey, it, w what's great about this program <laughs> is uh, every once in a while we got the guys that hang around the studio. Uh, Jules is one of them who brings uh, corned beef by, okay, uh, about twice a year. He, um, he is an investor relations firm um, who we generally don't pay attention to, but Jules is a very special case. And he introduces to a guy named Jay Gardina, spelled G-R-D-I-N-A. So it's uh, Jay, can Gardina. you find me a vowel? <laughs> Gardino. I couldn't afford uh, it. Obviously. <laughs> Try He's, that one in school. He is CEO uh, <laughs> Adamus One of a, of a company called Jewel. J E W. What is Adamus One? Is so, it a matrix thing? So Adamus One actually is a lab grown diamond company. It's bizarre. Industry right now. I mean, I, like cool, I said the same cool thing. Cool bizarre. <laughs> okay, can you fire somebody? So <laughs> it says your title is CEO and Adamus One, as if you're like the guy who runs the matrix. So I didn't realize the name of the company is Adamus One. Correct. Which yeah. means what? Adamus one, so the hardest substance known to man, Adamus. He corrected me. Right. Adama, which is actually the Greek right. word it comes from. Everything comes from a Greek okay. word. So you guys are a, a technology company, and you leverage your uh, IP to create laboratory diamonds? Correct. Talk to us about that, because Mike has his checkbook out. You know, it, it's funny when we talk about lab-grown diamonds, the same thing. So you can't make a, a diamond in a lab when the, when the opportunity first fell into my lap. And I said, you know, what does the company do? They said, well, they make diamonds. I go, oh, they have like a mine in Africa, or, like cut and polish. They're like, no, they actually make a diamond. I go, what do you mean? They make one in a lab. They go, oh, cubic zirconia moissan. They go, no, they actually make a real diamond. So then so my, my radar went up. I go, you can make a diamond. And then I started doing my research and I found out the assets that we actually purchased were the base patents, so all the patents for lab-grown diamonds, so there's 36 patents that we hold. So the technology that we harness has the ability to turn carbon-rich gas into an actual diamond. Chemically, optically, physically identical to a mine diamond. The only difference is one comes out of the earth, one comes out of the factory. We, well, we got the gas. Um, it, <laughs> let me ask you this. How is a real diamond made? Is it coal that's under pressure so for it, it's, it's carbon-rich gas, it's the same carbon. thing, but it's pressure and heat. So there's two ways to make a lab-grown diamond. HPHC, which is high pressure, high temperature, and we do by CVD, chemical vapor deposition. So we do just the opposite. We have no pressure, so we actually grow them in a vacuum, and but we have the heat. So we make it, we create a plasma, which is like a miniature sun or a star, within the reactor, and that's about three to five thousand degrees centigrade. Let me get this straight. So you uh, create a star. Yes. And you put Otherwise it into a, the god. Put it into it's a like microwave. <laughs> so my my question though is. A, a natural diamond mm -hmm. is made how? How does that? So how, it's how do, how does it Mother Nature through pressure, gas, and temperature over billions. But of is years. it like a little piece of something? Is like a? It serves as a piece of carbon almost, yeah. right? So it's a piece of carbon. So you, how do you turn coal into a diamond, right? Through right. pressure. So pressure, heat, and temperature. We all know that carbon can be a lubricant, right? These mm -hmm. carbon is lubricant, or the hardest substance on the earth, a diamond. It's also the number one thermal conductor in the world as well which most people don't know. So when we talk about semiconductors, thermal conductivity, five times that of silicone, et cetera, now you see the semiconductor industry going after lab-grown diamonds. So, 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 wait, wait, so, wait. so Jay, are you guys um, duplicating or mimicking nature, or have you gone around nature? So we went around nature. The HPHT, the high pressure temperature, high mm. temperature, is really mimicking what Mother Nature does. We kind of went around it and said, look, we know that chemical vapor deposition, and back of the napkin just means turning a gas into a solid. Mm. Dr. Linares in the early 90s said, hey, look, I think I can turn carbon-rich gas into a diamond. And that's the process. So he was the, the, the generator of the patents that we own. Do, are, do people in South Africa hate you? For what you guys me personally, doing? probably. Well, I was going to say because, and I mean, I couldn't afford no, not the model, but not for that reason. <laughs> no, but I, know, I know the sustainability in your company. That that's one of the one of your your cornerstones is the fact that you look at what they're doing in, in a 
regular diamond mine mm -hmm. and how would that just eats away at the mother earth and the byproducts and stuff like that versus what you do I mean, obviously, it's a much, much greener solution. Correct me if I'm wrong. 100%. So we look at, and you know, when, when mine diamonds and lab grown diamonds first started, you know, confronting each other, and this is back in, you know, the 90s and early 2000s, you know, it was always the mine diamonds were, were trying to position us into it's synthetic, it's not a real diamond. Well, I mean, let, let then, me, let's face it, you got the, the cubic world, right? The, the, which the, is a synthetic. That's which, actual which, synthetic. Which is a viable business on its own. This is different completely different. We actually grow a real diamond. So when we talk about sustainability or sustainability of mankind, especially post pandemic, we look at everybody's mindset now, especially the new generation is how do we sustain the earth? So obviously we can sustain ourselves as well, right? Sustainability for mankind. We look at we're completely an ESG company. We're as green as you can get. Even we look at our power source because obviously we draw a lot of power to create these diamonds. Mm -hmm. We're nuclear energy source. Duke Energy out of so, Greenville, South Carolina is nuclear base. So we have almost no carbon footprint whatsoever when we manufacture our diamonds. Unlike Mike, who has a carbon footprint of a small cow. Yeah. So Mike, here's <laughs> my question. Know, what it's is all the beans. So talk about value. Because we always talk about, you know, VVSI, VSI, IX, IXXI, right. XXI. Those are Roman numerals. We're talking about like the clarity, cut, uh, whatever. Points. How does this match up with Mother Nature? Great question. We look at, we have the same grading clarifications and qualifications as a mine diamond. So we go through the same bodies that certify, whether it's GIA, IGI, IGL, et cetera. Those who certified our stones in the same grading criteria that a mine diamond was. And we have the same certificate, just ours says lab grown diamond, which I wanted to say lab grown diamond for a lot of reasons, like we just talked about. Yeah, yeah. Sustainable for mankind, sure. sustainable earth, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So for us, it's the same criteria, it's color, Right, so we, we produce DEF, colorless diamonds, is, is our goal at, at all times. Clarity, so we talk about VVS1, yep. VVS2, et cetera. We try to do a VVS2, we're better, so almost But you could clear. create a blue diamond, I bet. We can, all you have to do is add four. Why diamonds. wouldn't you? So we do blue, we have specialized in pinks and whites, so we make the best pinks in the world. Pinks are very rare. The Argyle mine, which was the only mine that they could come out at any type of capacity, shut down almost two years ago. How long does it take you to make, a, let's say, a carrot? So we grow in cubes and okay. we grow in a 30 day process. Basically we take what we call diamond seeds. We put 50 seeds in the reactor on a diamond plate. We infuse it with a carbon rich gas plasma, it rains down and it starts growing a diamond. In a 30 day process, each one of those seeds grows about a four to five carat rough diamond. Holy. In 30 days. So now we're working out of technology to grow larger diamonds. So now we're at in that same process about a nine to 10 carat rough diamond in 30 day process. So the perception in the marketplace, mm -hmm. like I'm talking about, there's there's the last inch solution, which is I'm buying a diamond, right? Uh, but then there's the wholesaler, right? Which is the guys who are snooty. What talk to me about adoptability? So, when we looked at this industry two years ago, and you know, or even 2019 when I, I first bought the assets, we looked at the diamond industry for lab growns represented less than one one percent of diamond sales in America. Right now, we're just over 53 percent. So the perception very quickly went like this. Because we don't care as long as she's impressed. Right? Absolutely. So more bang for your buck. It's a value proposition as well. We sell our stones anywhere between 30 to 50% less than a mine stone in the retail market, as well as the wholesalers that poo pooed us at the beginning now love us because we found a way to put money right, and profits and margins back into every form, every part of the distribution chain. Do you have to create inclusions and imperfections no. to make it look like you're... Still happens. We look oh, at, okay. when we talk about the difference between a D color diamond and a J, which is pure, clear white, to starting to get pretty yellow. When we, when we talk about the formulation, it's less than one millionth of a part of nitrogen, which is a bubble. Like in one little burst, it, I, and it, it changes the whole color. So there's imperfections. You can have carbon fall down that comes into an ash and it's imperfection. You have inclusions. If the seeds that we grow on aren't perfect, right? If they're not perfectly cut, you get inclusions yeah. and that grow up as well. Uh, Jay Gardin is our guest. He's the CEO of Ad Adamus One, uh, Adamus One, uh, stock symbol J E W L. Uh, so what's a, what makes you guys bigger, better, faster? There must be other guys making. Uh, what you call seed to sale lab grown diamonds. So what makes you guys different? Our, it, it, a lot of different stuff, you know, that separates us from the pack. First of all, our technology, we're the only ones in the whole entire world that grow by DC current. It gives us a big, the ability to grow a larger, better color, better quality diamond at scale at a lower cogs 
than anybody. When you start talking adaptation to semiconductors, we just go like this, because what we can grow from a dimension standpoint and a dimension up as well is much greater than anybody else. We do, we do a one grow, which no one else can do to get a larger stone. So for you as a company, what are you guys looking forward to most for the next uh, six months, 18 months, five years? So we want to be the most vertically integrated lab-grown diamond company in the world, which means that we grow our own diamonds, sure. we cut and polish our own diamonds in-house, we build our own jewelry lines, which we're launching El Jolie, which is our first high-end luxury jewelry brand of, of lab-grown diamonds in America. And that's going to compete well with high-market stuff, correct? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's like David Herman type stuff. <laughs> Will you come back with us and hang out with us? Absolutely. It's, it's Any really cool stuff. Because what, what else can you grow? Uh, yeah. I've yeah, grown a lot of stuff in got my got life. A, he's got an import-export <laughs> business. We'll talk about, from the 80s, we'll talk about that. Adamus One. Adamus One. I can't pronounce it either. J that my last name. J-E-W-L is the stock symbol. Big biz show. More coming up. Stand by. The, uh...